For all you Windows Vista fans out there, I think Apple has something for you. All jokes aside, Apple's new release of liquid glass looks very reminiscent on a lot of different companies, even Apple themselves. Windows Vista came out with AeroGlass many, many years ago, and even Apple themselves have gone down the path of transparent panels with iOS 7. With the new announcement and showcase of liquid glass, you can see that it's well, maybe you can't see that it's not very visible. As somebody who's visually impaired, this design aesthetic really gets on my nerves. It's obviously not new, and I don't understand why companies keep doing this. It does, I guess, look aesthetic if you're not looking to use your device. So if you're coming from the perspective of somebody who wants to create friction, for example, those of us who are into digital minimalism or digital intentionalism, this could be an excellent feature. For example, if you don't want to be able to be enticed by the app designs, the colors, and things like this, um, liquid glass would be perfect for that because it kind of creates a visual clutter of things going together. That is to say, if you're using multiple panels or you're trying to navigate easily, this could be difficult for you to focus on. I'm not just talking about people with visual impairments like myself. I think a lot of people who may have difficulty focusing or really understanding how to use their interface as efficiently as possible, this could be very frustrating. Yes, it does look nice, but it does slow you down a bit. If you're looking to be somebody who's quickly in and out of their device, maybe this design choice won't be optimal for you. But the good news is it looks like it's not a default feature. It looks like something that needs to be activated and will be a choice, hopefully. But is this a signal that Apple is moving in a different direction with their design language? That's what has me worried. Because once Apple goes a certain way, a lot of other companies seem to follow along because they think this will be a trend and this will be something that people are asking for. But Apple should know better. They made the similar mistake with iOS 7 and got a lot of backlash for it. A lot of users complained they couldn't read anything on the display and it was difficult for them to navigate. Because like myself, a lot of people have visual impairments or conditions that could make it difficult to distinguish elements on a screen, especially with transparent panels. I'm not just talking about icons per se, but the text itself. If there's not enough contrast between the text and the background, this could create a lot of eye fatigue. This is why a lot of people complain of their eyes hurting on specific devices or specific design choices. And this is one of the reasons that Apple kind of phased that design out of iOS 7. They got a lot of negative feedback from an accessibility perspective, but just out of the general population complaining that the device was a lot harder to read. If this is the goal of Apple to get people to use their devices less, I will applaud them for that. But I don't think this is where they're trying to go. I think Apple is trying to go the route of making things more aesthetic, modern. And when in fact, again, it's not a modern design, it's already been done before, but it's just not usable. I mean, it's kind of like those concept designs of devices that are completely transparent. You know, when you watch sci-fi shows or even tech concept designs of something being completely transparent. There's this obsession with using a glass slab, literally, to be able to see things. But this, I don't think, will ever be realistic for most people. We need contrast to be able to see and to see comfortably. And unfortunately, the liquid glass design aesthetic is not really executing in that particular fashion. I think it's something that is a way for marketing and way for Apple to show that they're innovating when in fact they're just recycling things they've already done in the past and failed at. And perhaps people will talk about it like I am and get them more publicity. So this could also be the goal. And 
I think in the end, it's something that's just going to be phased out eventually. I don't think it's something that is usable as somebody who is visually impaired. I know a lot of visually impaired and blind people use Apple for their accessibility features. And it's a big shame that they are not going into a more inclusive design for those of us who need to use their devices. It is again worrying that they may implement this on other devices, making them a little bit more useless for those of us who want to use the device. And I just think it was another failed attempt at trying to look like they're innovating. Though with all this discussion on the liquid glass, there are some accessibility features that they thought about in the end. And they added this to the end of the video, of course, so it took me some time to get to it. But it looks like they're going to add some features to reduce the visibility of things behind the elements, as well as add a contrast border, which will help a lot of people. So if you're looking for those specific accessibility features, they will be included. But if you're somebody who's having difficulty seeing and you don't know how to use accessibility features or where to access them, this will be something that you may need to learn in order to be able to see things more clearly on this specific design aesthetic. Now, as somebody who does use accessibility features, I use the color filters, I use as many contrasting options as I can. I do like that they've added these features. I do feel like it makes it look worse in the end um, when you can just have an inclusive design from the base rather than separating those who need those specific features versus the rest of the population. Some people may not know they need those features activated, where to access them. I mean, think of our parents. How many of us get phone calls about where a button is, how to access certain things. Now teaching people to access these settings, how to configure them to their specific needs is going to be a whole nother level to go onto when it's not necessarily needed, I believe. I understand that they want to make it look innovative, look at, make it look natural, like water. They keep saying liquid glass, and I do get it. I do get where they're coming from, but and again, I don't think they're thinking of it from a practical sense. Um, obviously, thinking of the accessibility as an afterthought towards the end of the introduction is a little bit um, telling of where companies are coming from when it, in regards to legibility and usability. Even the terminology liquid glass for me makes me laugh. Liquid glass, if you are somebody who works with it, knows it's notoriously difficult, fragile. You have to get it very hot and at the right temperature to be able to mold it the way you want to. And it's just, uh, maybe it is the perfect term for this particular design aesthetic. Difficult to use. You need a certain skill. And if you don't use it at the right lighting or the time period, you won't be able to do what you need to do. And with that being said, I think this particular design aesthetic will look terrible in daylight. Could you imagine trying to get it to max brightness, but since the design elements are transparent and very light in color, you won't be able to see anything. Even if you're not visually impaired, it will just be a terrible display to use outside. But maybe the general population doesn't really use their device outside anymore. Do any of us go outside anymore? That's the question. When I think of this design compared to an e-paper or an e-ink device, I just think there's an obvious choice if you're somebody who wants to be able to reduce eye strain or use your device outdoors without really having to squint to be able to see what you're looking at. If those are your concerns, this probably is not the design aesthetic that you want to go with. But again, it kind of makes me laugh thinking that companies are releasing new things that really are just an old iteration of something that's already existed and already failed. And I guess they just have so much money they can fail again. What do you think about this liquid glass display? Is it something that you would like to activate on your iPhone if you have one? I know for myself, again, I think this could be a great tool for digital minimalism. I think it could create some friction and some frustration that people may be looking for to reduce the time on their devices. But I don't think this is what Apple had intended. I would like to give a big thank you to the channel supporters and I would like to thank all of you for watching this video and see you soon.